Looking up at the night sky can be a humbling experience. All of those shining lights speckling the expanse above represent a vast and ever expanding universe. Space is supposedly the final frontier, but is that really the case? Can we know for a fact that it's the end all and be all of our potential experience? We've only just begun exploring and the recent billionaire escapades to the outer limits of our atmosphere are just flashy technology exhibitions. So what have we actually seen? What do we know for sure? What is left to be explored? It's a fascinating and constantly puzzling question. How much of space have we explored? We'll start with some actual human exploration and then move on to some more abstract, far away stuff. In terms of human presence in space, there's actually been relatively little. Since Yuri Gargan, the Soviet cosmonaut, orbited the planet for a bit back in 1961, only a few hundred have made the journey. The resources required to get a living human into space and keep them sustained tend to be expensive and complex, making for a much harder time. Ensuring that the craft is traveling in a way that won't cause problems for those on board is a whole puzzle within itself, and as such, we've only really made it as far as the moon. A monumental achievement, for sure, but there aren't many places other than Earth that have been graced by our boots. Folks have been sent to the International Space Station to complete research, and there are dreams of setting up other, more permanent fixtures in space, but in terms of actually being there, we're mostly sticking close to home. Fair enough. As time goes on, more and more people seem to be interested in setting foot on Mars. We've got rovers on the surface already, and that's probably going to be the extent of things for a while. An off-world colony seems more like sci-fi fantasy than anything else, but many folks are very invested in this dream, so we'll see how it plays out in the meanwhile. Although we haven't been able to bring people too many places in space, we've actually seen quite a lot. Now that's the beauty of space exploration versus something like the ocean. Although these waters are much closer to us, and hypothetically Aesthetically more accessible, it's actually quite difficult to chart them. See, the ocean is deep and vast, and the deeper you go, the harder it is to see and maneuver. After a few hundred feet, sunlight's gone and pressures can be very intense. So even using modern charting technology, it's tough to know exactly what we're seeing down there. Compare that to space, where everything is wide open and light from celestial bodies permeates throughout all of it. We might say that black holes are there to make that a little less true, but hey. So using all sorts of imaging technology and a whole lot of inferences, folks have technically explored a fair deal of outer space. It's tough to give an exact answer though because there are so many outstanding questions, but as we are right now, space doesn't appear to be as infinite as we once thought. That could change with new discoveries however, and of course I'm not an expert in the field, I just find it interesting. Here's a neat statistic. Right now all the stuff we can see in space, whether it's planets, stars, or galaxies, makes up about 4% of the universe. That's it. All the things that are visible using the technology we've put together comes out as less than 1 20th of the grand total. Even so, all of that is an incredible amount of space. It gets weirder when you consider how much we can't see though. What makes up the other 96% and why can't we see it? Well, as of right now, we don't have many concrete answers. Scientists have coined the unknowable as dark matter and dark energy. We're unable to actually see or measure any of it at this moment and mostly know about it because of what we've inferred. Subtle changes in gravitational influence on the bits we can see make people believe that there is indeed more out there, but there's currently no way to measure, interact with, or even detect these dark forces. Fascinating. While observing the speeds of stars at different locations across galaxies, Vera Rubin discovered that all of the stars in a given galaxy were orbiting at the same speed. This went against the Newtonian prediction that the stars further out would be orbiting slower than the ones closer to the center. With that information in mind, it was thought that there had to be something else out there influencing the universe. What it is exactly is still elusive, but there has to be something, right? One theory is that dark matter is made up of particles that don't interact with regular matter. Hell, it might not even interact with light. But that gravitational influence means something must be there. Dark energy is even weirder as it defies expectations in a more dramatic way. While attempting to figure out how quickly the universe was expanding, scientists went in with the notion that it could either be expanding at a uniform rate or possibly even slowing down. But it turns out that it's actually speeding up. That flew in the face of what folks knew about gravity as they were under the assumption that matter would eventually be pulled back in by its own gravity eventually. Not so, resulting in people accepting that there's some other energy out there pulling things in new and novel directions. Crazy to even consider, but here we are. 
That's the thing about science. It's always shifting and changing to fit in new evidence that contradicts the old stuff. We're always learning. Never forget that. Looking back at the development of space exploration over time, lots of different ideas were floated, accepted as true, and then disproven. That's just the way it goes. For a long time, Harlow Shapley's estimate that the Milky Way would be 300,000 light years across was widely accepted. Then with some new calculations and evidence, we've landed on a more conservative estimate of between 100 and 150,000 light years. That's just the Milky Way though. The observable universe, not including dark matter, is something like 93 billion light years in diameter. This number understandably took us quite a while to come up with. Centuries even. But hey, astronomy is a difficult thing to get perfect, considering how far away everything is. How are you supposed to measure something you can never really see, let alone get close to? How can we account for the massive scale of the universe and the planets and stars that make up so much of it? Well, lots of different methods have been used throughout history. Right now, an easy one for planets within reach is to use radio waves. Bouncing these waves off the planets and measuring how long they take to return gives a quality measurement. Anything further than our solar system will result in a super long wait time though, so folks have come up with other ways to explore the cosmos. Using methods like parallax, where using telescopes, we can see where the stars are in the sky at one particular time, and then six months later when we're on the other side of the sun measuring those same stars. Using the relative shift of these stars can give scientists a good idea of where they are and how far away. But this has limitations too. Measuring the brightness of a star can be helpful for determining distance, and learning how they pulse can make it more clear as to how far they are and how big they are. This is a very simplistic overview of the measurements used to determine the size of the universe, and of course at any time a new discovery could flip the table and cause a whole lot of preconceived notions to be tossed out the window. So we've seen billions of light years away using the Hubble telescope, and even that isn't scratching the surface of what could be out there. With dark matter and dark energy looming large in scientists' minds, we've currently only seen a fraction of outer space. It's wild to think about, and most of this has happened thanks to the technologies we've developed over the past hundred years or so. Astronomers have been around for ages, far longer than modern telescopes, but their inferences had to be made with a lot less information. So who knows what we'll find next. What do you think? Are we on the brink of a breakthrough in the universal experience? Or will the budgets for discovering new things in space be reallocated so more billionaires can have their own personal trips through the atmosphere? How far will humans make it in the vast expanse? All questions that won't likely be answered soon, but maybe someday in the far off future. Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more brutal ones from the top 10 real life scary species that you never knew existed. Slicer1475 says, boy, if he hates teeth in horror movies, then he'll love the movie Teeth. See, that one's not so bad because you don't really see the teeth, you dig? Paul Harpin says, I've heard of the purple frog, but has the purple frog heard of you? SCP Commander says, geez, those animals are weird. Well, says the SCP Commander, I'm sure you've seen weirder. Amber Malazi says, hi, life's biggest questions, can you please do a video about Venus? How about a video about Serena? And Fox Jake says, what if Jurassic Park was an actual theme park? So many lawsuits. And that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Although we haven't been able to bring many people to play with. Although we haven't been able to bring many. Bleh. Although we haven't bring. Bleh. Although we haven't been able to bring people to too many. Bleh. What is happening with this? It's not even a hard sentence. So even using Marting. Marting. Tarting. Checkchology. Dark energy is even weirder, as it defies exportations. I'm having a tough time this morning, apparently. Dark energy, dark energy, nope. So, no, re, no, nope. Not so, resulting in people using methods like parallax, where you're using telescopes.